Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 185, Texas Zoldum, recorded on Friday, February 11th, 2021 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt and let's get right on into the show. So I said Texas Zoldum, it's actually Texas Zoldum. Is that what I was supposed to go? <laughs> yeah, we got to do the we got to do the clever title. It's uh, do justice here, Brett. <laughs> Texas Zoldum. I know, poor Greg, man. He's always, uh, he works so hard on those titles. All right, let's get right to it. As always, we will start off with our announcements and events. Um, you can always head over to Zenato.com events to see all of the latest things that are coming up. We are going to do our Zoho CRM full product tutorial on Tuesday, February 15th at uh, 10 a.m., and um, there are some other events. Uh, Zoho's got one coming up on the 17th called Make the Most of Your Investment in CRM. Um, actually, it's the BRCC invites you. So I don't know who the BRCC is, but <laughs> like I say, we look everywhere. We scour the web for any events having to do with Zoho. You can always find them right here on our events page. And we'll make it easier for you to subscribe to our events. You actually can just fill out one form, check the ones you want to go to, and uh, We'll send you a link, add all those to your calendar so you'll never, ever, ever miss one of our events. I'm excited about our CRM one, uh, Tyler. It's going to be um, interesting because you're doing the deck. I'm leaving for Mexico as soon as we finish this show, and I'm not going to get back until like Monday night. So I'm just going to show up Tuesday and wing it, I guess. But uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like CRM, I did with so. Our recent webinar that we did with the Zoho uh, finance team, their partner team over there, uh, John Oda, our uh, director of finance services, put that whole deck together. So now I'm passing on the good fortunes to you, Brett, and you get to sit this one out in terms of uh, making the slides. Well, it'll be good. It'll be good. For those of you that wonder, Tyler got a green screen, but we're having a green screen malfunction. So you actually look good. It looks better than that blurry. It is now 4K. Before, I'm right? not so. running it through the little intermediate tool I was using to pass a virtual background. So now you have a real green screen behind me. Uh, absolutely. All right. And with that, let's get right on into this week's news. We will uh, start with... Um, Zoho sees a migration influx. So there was some big news where basically Google got rid of their free version of Workplace because yep. Zoho had a free version of that. They got rid of that and uh, a whole bunch of people. Um, they've had a 120% increase in migrations from Google hosted domains <laughs> after the free edition stopped. So uh, yeah. pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, interesting there. I mean, at the end of the day, too, if you're looking for a cloud tool that's going to host your email, manage your documents, give you some file storage, I mean, you're not losing a lot by switching over to Zoho, right? I mean, you'll have to learn a new UI, a couple little bells and whistles that, you know, might live in a different place. But yeah, I guess this was kind of what Zoho was hoping for, right? With making a lot of those services free or extremely cheap out the gate. Um, and I think Google kind of played into their hand by instituting that new uh, fee structure. Yeah, not it's not bad. So it's interesting. And do they have a free version now? They do have a free version, right? Of WordPress. Yeah, they've got a free kind of introductory version. Yeah, nice. Which I think is all you need if you were on the Google free version. So yeah, good for Zoho there. And then in other news here, Zoho Voice they now actually have a mobile app for their Z Dialer. Um, the Z Dialer is their Chrome extension that basically allows you to dial if you're using Google Voice. And, you know, this app is coming along. Um, when this was first released, I think it was a little bit, you know, kind of out of out of sorts, kind of wasn't quite there. But over time, they're getting there and they're starting to get all the features you have to have if you're actually going to switch to uh, a phone service, right? You have to have a mobile app that integrates that you can do things with. So uh, this is pretty nice. Pretty nice all the way. Yeah, around. absolutely. I mean, I see a, a lot of opportunity for this product as time goes on. I mean, we, I was just talking to Skylar, uh, one of our developers who handles a lot of our voice over IP. And it feels like just about every service has their own issues. So you're kind of just picking from what's going to, which issue is the least important to you. And almost every voice over IP can be a little bit of a pain to actually get set up and integrated. So we over here at Sonata are really, really hoping that Zoho kind of hits this one out of the park this year with Zoho Voice, because um, we'd love to just start recommending that people go here for their telephony and kind of do away with a lot of the third-party providers that uh, that they're working with now. 
Yeah, I just got an email this morning from somebody asking me, they're saying, hey, look, we're thinking about switching from, you know, either to Ring Central or to Zoho Voice. Which should we go with? What should we go with? I still think I'd have to put people towards Ring Central right now. Um, just from a pure, it just works and it works with mm -hmm. everything and it works with all the Zoho apps and the mobile app is great. And the Chrome extension is great. And let's face it, that's all they do is telephony. Um, but it can depend on your organization. And that's one of the things, you know, every organization is different. And some of them need, a, a, you know, they need a different things. Some people need to have, you know, calls one number and it rings eight people at the same time. Some people know it needed to go from one number to the next number to the next number. You know, Zoho Voice yeah. isn't really doing that yet, right? Uh, you need to be able to put on a hold and transfer calls. You need internal dialing. If you're just looking for basic telephony, you know, Zoho Voice is going to get there. Once they roll in some of those true what, IVR functionalities, call center yeah. functionalities, PBX functionalities, once those things get going, I think it's, it's going to be there. But that team's working hard and making a lot of changes to the product. So it's getting better and better. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, moving on. Uh, this is kind of cool. So Zoho Desk has got this uh, guided conversations um, and they're opening this up for early access. So if, if you're watching the show on YouTube, or if not, if you're listening to it, make sure you get our newsletter or just go to Zanata.com and go to CRM Zen and look at the very latest that's going on over there. And uh, when you look at our latest show, we have all the show notes in there and you can there's a link here to sign up for early access to uh, cards. Um, in looking at this, man, they're really cool, Tyler. You can have, you know, just a single card. You can have an info card block. You can have a choice card block where you can choose certain things that are presented. Uh, they're kind of doing like a vacation stay kind of thing here where mm -hmm. you can stay at various places. And uh, But interesting, I don't know how this fits into desk, what they're using here. Um, but well, I think uh, it fits in the sense of like an incoming support request. And you might say, uh, do you need help with a piece of software or a piece of hardware? You know, if you choose software now, maybe we show you a couple cards. Is it this app, this app, or this app? Yeah. Right. And then you select that and maybe it connects you to the relevant expert of that application. Yeah. So it's so kind of like the vacation example. Robots. Yeah. You're looking to get, yeah. you know, you've got two different things here. You could either try to build yep. this to handle the whole interaction with the customer, or you could kind of yep. handle as like a pre-filtering step, right? Where they start here, they provide you some info, and then it routes to the correct person to actually handle the request. It's pretty cool though. Yeah. Um, I really like this stuff. I think I personally, as a user of websites, am a lot more likely to interact with the chat because I think it's going to be instant or at least faster. So consider implementing things like this at your company if you think that there uh, might be demand for it with your customer base because um, they can do a lot of work for you. Yeah, it's pretty slick. And down below, they kind of went with the vacation thing up front, but now they more have a help desk one. You know, what product do you need help with? What product do you want support? You, maybe you've got multiple products you need support with. So uh, very, very cool. All right, and moving right along, custom in Zoho projects, you now can have custom functions for tasks. So upon a completion of a task, uh, upon you changing a status in a task, you now can fire off a custom function. And one of the things they talked about here is kind of cool. Like, you know, you actually can say, okay, hey, once this function is complete, you know, let me go see if, if all the subtasks and if the subtasks are complete, then, you know, mark it all as complete. Um, it seems to me, Tyler, this is going to add a whole lot of power to projects. Mm -hmm. And these are a lot of things that we've kind of had to do with flow and some weird workarounds in the past. Um, the one challenge with the projects API is that it's always project specific. So like in flow, a lot of the times you're saying if a task is completed in project A, then go and do this thing. Um, these rules look to be consistent across projects, which is great. So you could say, if a task is closed and the name of that task is, you know, do this, then notify this person by sending an email in your function, right? Or once this task is completed, move these other three tasks from on hold to ready to start, right? So kind of building some of those custom workflows that you might need within Zoho projects. Um, really, really exciting. I think that the team does a lot of 
workarounds to kind of do this same thing now. And this might cut out some of those unnecessary steps. Yeah. It's, I think, the biggest announcement of the week. All and right. Then, and then moving the on. Places, uh, the more places we can trigger deluge functions, the better. So I'll take any place yeah. that we can trigger one is, is a great improvement. Yeah, it's going to open things up there. All right. And then we've got a rundown of what's new in Zoho Books in uh, for February. We covered one of these, which is contextual chat. Uh, basically, in books now, if you're using Click, you will basically see those chat. Uh, you can open up those chats just directly in the bottom line, um, in, in the, the bottom toolbar of Zoho Books now. Um, global tax rules. This one's kind of interesting, Tyler. So it used to be there is a portal for, in books and so the whole financial suite pretty much has a portal, but you actually had to send an invite out and invite someone to join the portal. Um, mm -hmm. Now you don't have to do that anymore. Your, your customers can just sign up uh, by themselves. You can just have a something on the invoice that says, hey, you know, view stuff in the portal or whatever, and they can decide whether or not they want to go in and set themselves up in the portal or not. Kind of nice. Yeah, it's pretty great. A useful tool. Yeah, I think so. All righty. And then moving right along with the news this week, um, Zoho Recruit now has multi-account support for premium job boards. Um, so that means I would imagine this is if you are a uh, recruitment firm, you run an ATS, uh, those kind of things. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pause the show right here. I'll be right back. You can pass it over to me and I'll cover this one here. Um, so yeah, in essence, this is a case where you might be a recruiting firm. You have four different clients that you're working with and you want to actually use each of those four accounts to create job opening posts onto like a premium indeed page. And this is essentially a way that you can log in all those accounts discreetly. And then when you go to post a job on behalf of one of your clients, uh, you could essentially say, post this job using the Zanata account, post this job using the CRM Zen account, so that any of those can be specific and actually pull from the, you know, the paid budget for promoting those job openings that's specific to that individual company or client that you're working with. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, I like it. Moving on then. <laughs> so uh, begin. This is one of those already thought it was there. You can now do an attachment through a URL. So this is pretty much supported for all Zoho applications. You know, when you go to files or attachments, you can download a file, you can upload a file. In this case, you, you know, you can also just put a URL in and it's going to link to that file. You can now do that again. You can now do that. Yes, in this I mobile app, I believe is where they've added it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? All righty. And uh, Click Meetings extends their support for iOS devices. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this would work. You could have 1,000 participants in a single conference on your iOS device um, in your Click Meeting. But Are uh, people using Click to do that? <laughs> I, I can't what's imagine. That? I can't imagine when I would have a channel with 1,000 people in it where I would do this. But um... I guess if you do, if you're hosting communities or building any type of external community on Click, you know, you might end up using yeah. this. I don't know how common I think the that's nice really part of this be. is. Uh, you know, the nice part of this is we've got all kinds of clients. I mean, all kinds of channels, right? In groups, and so you know, you know, maybe it's me, you, and Jordan, and Josh are in a group, and Drew, and you know, I just want to have a quick call. I can just you know fire off a call directly oh, from the mobile device. That. So. We use that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, super, super nice and uh, nice enhancements. And we rave about Click all the time. It's, uh, you know, it's just one of those apps that just gets better and better and it's under constant improvement. And there's just so much you can do with it. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, there's, we basically you can have an email come into an inbox. We've got one where we have, we've got a whole series of emails we get from Zoho that give us client updates. And um, they just come in as an email and we take those emails and we forward those emails to desk. And then in desk, we do all sorts of parsing of those emails. And then we put simple announcements into the click channel announcing the little client updates and client changes that Zoho's <laughs> letting us know about. So everybody in the company can know what's going on with the various client. I mean, 
it just the power to click and the power to communicate with a team without having to send emails all over the place. It's just, it's great. Super good. All right. Next story. Also on click, you can now fix your click Android notification issues with resolve notification option for click. You can also do this in iOS. And if you're using the mobile device, I don't know if you've ever seen this title, but sometimes you open click on your mobile device and it shows that you've got like dozens of unread conversations, Yes. <laughs> but you really don't have dozens of unread conversations. And I've noticed um, it's well, you worse can... if you have your conversations pinned into folders. Um, when you yeah. have them in folders, that's oftentimes where I notice that the notification button or the little blinky does not go away when you've opened them up. Yeah. So you now can click on the hamburger in the upper uh, left-hand corner and just say resolve all notifications and it's going to clear them all out for you and get you back to where you want to be. Nice little bug fix, I would say. I would say bug you? fix. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. And I, you'll have to explain this one, but everybody has just been clamoring for um, <laughs> Zoho Mail <laughs> to support uh, uh, Pop for Microsoft Outlook for the Outlook add-in. But anyway, if you're odd one, living... um, you'd think you would think resources here would be allocated to IMAP integrations, being that that's kind of the, the main yeah. way that it already, want it already does IMAP. It already does IMAP and ActiveSync. They just decided to have Going pop. back in time so, here and adding pop just in case. There must be a need for it. I have no idea why. You know, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, you have a mail server and that's where all your mail sits. And if you get your mail by pop and you get it on your phone and you get it on your desktop and maybe get it on an iPad or whatever, and you everything's good doing by pop. When you read something, nothing changes, nothing you know, you're not putting in folders. So when you're reading your mail on one, it shows up as unread on the other because it's just straight up pop. If you do IMAP, um, when you read something, you, you mark something as read, you move it to a folder, it does it on all your devices. So whenever you pick up another device, it's where you basically left off in your email world. Um, and, but pop doesn't do that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just someone, you know, if you want to pull over all your mail, sometimes it's a good way to go. Any other reasons you can think of this, Tyler? I can't think of one. All right. <laughs> other than a big Me. customer asked for it. That's about uh, <laughs> that's all I can think of. <laughs> that's, prob that's probably it. All right. And then two stories that are just, uh, let's, we've got a story saying Zoho Marketing Plus and CRM Plus now support Pinterest. Uh, basically, if you're using Zoho Social, uh, it just supports Pinterest now across the board. We kind of had this story before, and then it seems like all of the little marketing teams and product teams like to come out and say, and our product supports Pinterest as well, because yes, uh -huh. you have Zoho Social. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it supports Pinterest. So if you have any bundle that has Zoho Social in it, you can now publish to Pinterest. Very cool. I went on Pinterest, by the way, for the first time after I saw this. I don't get it, man. Someone's going to have to explain that to me. That was the most yeah, confusing I'm not quite thing. Sure on that one either. I've never used it. I know. I know there are people that love it. I need a Pinterest pro to sit me down and tell me that why that why that's uh, show you the why light. worth doing. Yeah, yeah, something. Um, so anyway, well, with that, Tyler, it takes us to our implementation of the week. So, the Pinterest integration. Uh, it's not a Pinterest integration. It's actually a little build out that we did uh, internally, but I like to highlight this as an option for people that might need a similar thing. So, you know, oftentimes we get asked by clients to pull some reports on progress towards targets. You know, a common one would be like our sales for each salesperson against their quotas or their targets for sales. Um, but generally those targets are not explicitly stored within the CRM. And everyone kind of likes to do them differently. You know, you might have weekly targets, monthly targets, quarterly, you know, maybe you want to do it all by week, but then just be able to roll it up to the month and to the quarter. Some people even go by day. Um, but you know, those targets often change, right? You're adding employees, you're removing employees. You might have an employee that way overshoots their targets. So you want to go in and change those. Um, and what we found is, you know, you could create a module in the CRM for target data and kind of park it all there. Uh, and that'd be a totally fair way to go about doing it. 
Um, but what we found lately is that we can actually just build a Zoho sheet hosted over in WorkDrive. Um, benefit of that is now you're kind of managing your quotas in a more familiar view. So you're using a spreadsheet, right? You got all your common operations. Um, and then the beauty is uh, Zoho WorkDrive and Sheet can sync directly into Zoho Analytics. Um, and then you can marry up that data against, you know, your CRM sales, your books, invoices, you know, whatever it is that represents the revenue or sales object for you. Um, really the key thing here is just the usage of Zoho Sheet, you know, because it's cloud-based, you don't have to really do much in terms of managing it, um, but it just gives you the ability to slice and dice it. So for example, we did it recently where, you know, you've got a monthly revenue target for various users, but then you also want to set a like weekly target well, if you're doing that within custom modules, you're doing this with a bunch of functions and deluge. If you have it in a spreadsheet, you just add another tab, kind of do your spreadsheet magic, and now you've got those weekly totals broken out. Um, so it's kind of a time saver, kind of something that if you want to work in a sheet and kind of manage some of your data there, uh, you can do it this way while still getting the benefits of uh, kind of live analytics in a cloud environment. Excellent. Yeah, just kind of a simple solution for that, huh? Yep. I mean, rather than like you said, rather than build out a right? That you've got all these different places to put data. So kind of pick the one that works for you. All right. Just a nice little down and dirty data source that you can easily manipulate and do whatever you need to do with. Exactly. So very, very good. All righty. And then that brings us to our read of the week. And this is, uh, Wayne found this, this is over from Zapier, what PR agencies will and won't do and how to hire one. Uh, great article. Uh, I read through this last night. Um, and, you know, oftentimes I think people are confused about what a PR agency is really going to do for them. And this is, this kind of breaks it down and uh, talks about the things that they will do and the things that they won't do. And, um, you know, so if you're looking for a PR agency, this is kind of a good little starting place to say, okay, do I need these things in my company? Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes it's, you know, I'm just going to use a PR agency to get my press release out there and, you know, they're going to try to post it. But, you know, you really want one that is really dialed into whatever your industry is, maybe has relationships with certain people. Um, those are the kind of things that really drive, you know, drive your overall business there. So it's, uh, it's, it's uh, interesting. And I think uh, a nice article. So take a look at this. And as always, Zapier does a great job. And Zapier and HubSpot, they're just constantly, uh, yeah, great you know, writer constantly produce. Ah, oh, man. And I, they're, they're not freelance either. Most a lot of these people, you know, they're they're either industry experts that they're bringing in, right, mm -hmm. or they're staff writers that are just doing an incredible, incredible job. But it's not like they're going out somewhere and just having someone just write them some random blog. I mean, they're they're uh, really good. And then over at uh, Zanata.com, we've got a couple of things. So uh, we want to do a shout out to Communication Partners, a great client of ours. They gave us a nice little case study. Um, I don't know who worked on this one, Tyler, because it's certainly... Uh, it's certainly primarily Josh and Greg, kind of a team effort on this one, um, on the various things that we worked on here. Really everything from CRM to projects to analytics, kind of the archetypal kind of customer journey management inside of Zoho. Um, absolutely yeah, great this team. This was a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, great. And they were on Asana and uh, we moved them over to Zoho. They decided they yep. need more of that functionality and uh, they are happy with it. And we're happy that they picked us to do this for them. So shout out to Kate and everybody over at Communication Partners. Thank you. And also on our website, we've got a uh, Elementor versus Gutenberg, choosing the right page builder. And for those of you that aren't familiar, basically WordPress launched Gutenberg, I don't know, two, three, four years ago. It seemed maybe it was only two or three years ago. And slowly it's been kind of going, taking over a lot of the things that WordPress page builders did. We're talking about WordPress here. I guess I should be clear about that. And what this does is this is kind of breaking down what are the differences between the two it kind of comes down to a matter of preference so if you're uh, building out a new wordpress site and you're thinking about man should i use a page builder whether that's beaver builder or elementor or any of those or should i just go with gutenberg um this will kind of point you in the right direction 
So uh, thanks for the team for putting that together as well. All righty. And then that takes us to our pick of the week. Um, this is really cool. So we um, kind of earlier I was showing our uh event section where people can now do, you know, they fill out the form and they pick out multiple things. And then basically they go ahead and hit, you know, uh, this is what I want. And now we're sending them an email and be, by using ad event, what it allows you to do is it basically allows you to put really, really, really nice little, um, add to calendar buttons at the bottom of your at the bottom of your emails and it builds out your calendar and you can share a calendar and there's just a ton of things that you can do with this. Um, and, uh, we've just, uh, you know, we find it to be great. It just really, really slick. It makes it very easy for people to add things to their calendar. So they never miss an event. Um, and so, it, you know, if, if you're considering, you know, hosting, doing your own events, which is what we've moved to, you know, we're pushing everything through Ecamm now, we're doing all our events live. So we can't use the registration tools that are on Zoom um, or, or go to meeting or any of the other services that are out there for kind of doing these live events. So we had to create our own and we want to make sure it gets to the calendar. Um, so it's a pretty, uh, Pretty great tool. So I cannot do anything but uh, highly recommend it. Not necessarily all that cheap at the end of the day. Um, I guess $99 a month um, for the professional. Uh, the small business, which is really kind of all you need, is about $19 a month. Uh, but it, uh, you know, for us, we don't do more than 50, uh, 50 events in a month. So we're kind of in good shape with that. Um, but uh, nice product. Uh, super slick and uh, add event.com. Check them out. All right, Tyler. And then that brings us to our tip of the week, which you did, which is setting up an approval process inside Zoho CRM. And uh, this, of course, is over on our YouTube channel. 15 minutes, 22 seconds. What are people going to learn when they watch this video? It's kind of a walkthrough of, um, you know, what an approval rule is and why you might set one up as well as the actual practicality of where to go to turn it on. Um, you know, so in essence, an approval rule is a method in the CRM that you can use to stop a record's progress at a certain point until someone has given it a stamp of approval. Um, so in this one, we walk through it for a deal where we use a layout rule to uh, require a couple fields and then a um, approval process to uh, force someone to review those fields before the record can proceed. Um, so useful in those cases where you have to do data validation, you know, you might have a use case where for one out of every 10 proposals, we might need to do something really custom and bust out AutoCAD, but you wanna make sure that we have all the necessary data before we allocate any of our team's time to do that. Um, so there's some use cases there where it's going to just help with your efficiency and make sure things aren't going back and forth in the pipeline that they only move forward and that you have those controls that you need. Yep. And as always, to find out all of our videos, head over to youtube.com slash Sonata and go ahead and subscribe. Click that bell. Do all those kind of things. Make sure you never, you'll, you, if you'd already clicked the bell, you would have known that this video dropped a day ago. You already, already watched it and been ahead of the game there. So uh, good stuff. And with that, let's get to our Q and A. Um, and lastly, before we get to that, also go to Zanata.com slash newsletter and subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and then you'll get all of this information delivered to you on a weekly basis, every Monday at 6 a.m. Pacific time into your inbox. All right, first question, Tyler. This is on our boy from our 2020 CRM next activity date for deals implementation. <laughs> um, thanks for this. Is there anywhere we can actually look up the script and how it was implemented? I'm not sure. I didn't read these ahead of time. Do you remember what we're talking about here? Um, yeah, this is like date stamping for like the next date when an activity will be created for a record where you close a task and then it sets the date forward two weeks. And then you've got a workflow on that date field that creates the next task. So it kind of puts it in a loop where you're getting reminded to touch back in on a record. Um, we don't have this documented anywhere publicly visible. 
Martin, it's uh, really a combination of two workflows. So one workflow on task completion that writes a certain date value to the uh, like lead or deal record. So there you're taking like Zoho current date plus X number of days and then writing it. And then you have a second workflow triggered in that like lead or deal record. And you want it to be a date-based workflow on that date that will create the next task in that cycle. Um, other than that, with you know some kind of relatively simple deluge code to support it, you should be able to get that implemented. Yeah. Um, Martin, I'll talk to the team. Maybe if you head over to Club Zanata um, and, uh, and, and check out Club Zanata, we will... Uh, that's go to zanata.com and you can basically go directly there and we have a little code share. We do various things. This is a really small piece of code, club.zanata.com. Go ahead and register. Uh, maybe we'll try to get that posted up for you the next couple of weeks because it's uh, just a few lines of code, isn't it, Tyler? Uh, well, it's a few lines of code and two different workflows. And two workflows. It's not just right, a code right. thing. It's an implementation. It's as a whole. The workflows are the key. Right, right, right. All right, maybe we'll do a quick video on that for you. All righty. And then uh, Derek, after watching our Zoho Recruit full product tutorial, says, I have used Zoho CRM and I've had Recruit for over a few years now and I have not touched it. It seems cumbersome and not user-friendly. I've looked at uh, Crelate and Loxo and they seem superb. I'm curious, can anyone share the pros and cons? I can't help you with those. Um, I love Zoho Recruit though. I don't know. You've looked at it for over a year. We did, uh, if you watched the tutorial, you still found it cumbersome. I mean, a lot of people I know that have had trouble with it, they watched that tutorial and they said, oh, that explained everything to me. Um, we use it every day here. I'm not familiar with those others. Um, you know, as we talk about with a lot of Zoho products though, um, you know, Zoho has 60 different products and there are companies that just focus on one thing. They're just ATS companies and that's all they do. And, uh, Sometimes those products aren't nearly as good as the Zoho version of it, and sometimes they're better. And, you know, it's going to kind of be what suits your lifestyle the best, what suits your needs, what suits your workflow. You know, Tyler, you and I talk about this all the time with project management tools, right? What's the best project management tool? The one that allows you to manage your product projects the best. Uh, it's just, it, there are so many different versions. Some people like spreadsheets, some, you know, like pro programs like Smartsheets. Some people like Microsoft Projects, which is very similar to Zoho Projects. Some people like Agile Development, and they're using Jira or they're using Zoho Sprints. It's just, it's the same thing, I think, with applicant tracking systems. So uh, you just got to find one that uh, fits you. All right. And next question. This was on our CRM full product tutorial 2021. We're going to be refreshing this year in uh, five days. <laughs> we'll have a 2022. Uh, Simon asks, hi, can you advise on how to close a lead as a dead end? If you have some, some cold call leads, which don't go anywhere, how do you archive them? Thanks. Custom views, right, Tyler? Yeah. So the CRM doesn't really archive. Um, it does do custom views. So if you had a lead status for dead lead and you move that lead there, you might make a custom view of active leads where lead status isn't dead or lost. And then they'll effectively be filtered out of your like working view. If you really wanted to archive them, you could always pull them out as a like filtered report and export them and then mass delete. But otherwise, most of the time we get around this just by using custom views. Um, to filter out any of those dead or lost leads. All right. And then the next question, this is from Gadget and Tech HD. After watching our Zoho Mail full product tutorial, can Zoho Mail be integrated in Microsoft Outlook using IMAP and POP3 po protocols? Well, yes, it can. <laughs> We could have said just IMAP, but now it's IMAP and POP3. Yeah, Zoho Mail can be used as an email client. And so you basically can go in and set it up as you would any other email client. Um, as a matter of fact, when you're setting it up as a client that way, um, and I might, we're saying Microsoft Outlook, I imagine you're, you're really referring to Exchange here. Um, so if you're using Office 365 or Exchange Server, you can just go ahead that, put your credentials in, um, choose IMAP, and then uh, away you go. All right, and with that, that brings us to the end of the show, Tyler. 
You know, I didn't get any fan mail for my uh, lyrics that I wrote to our closing theme yeah, last week. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, it's, it's I know. I thought it was going to trend on. I thought it was going to trend on Spotify too. But uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please head over to zanata.com or join us at club.zanata.com and ask your questions there. And of course, on the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, we'd love if you would follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on YouTube and your choice of podcast service. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next Friday. Bye, everybody. I'm off to Mexico. I'm going to Mexico. See you all.